Hi, this is Scott Erickson with DTG. Uh, we are a digital and wide format imaging reseller based in Tampa, Florida. And today we're going to actually show you how to set up, install, and show you some of the features and the uses of the new Epson 7700 uh, and 9700 printers. Today we're going to be setting up the 7700, but the 9700 is almost identical in every way except that obviously it's a lot bigger being 44 inches wide. So when you order and uh, receive the printer, it does come, as you see here, it comes on a wooden pallet and then obviously the big box here on top. Uh, when you're ordering the printer, I do recommend that uh, you speak with um, your sales rep and if you do need a lift gate, um, to request that on the truck because obviously it is big and heavy. So when it comes in, the first thing I'm going to do is actually walk over to, to the side of the printer and on the side we've got a sticker that says open here for installation information and documentation. So we just cut that door open and then inside here we've got the power cord and the user manual that you know basically shows us not only how to set up and install the uh, printer, but how to use it as well. So take this out first if you've got any questions, and you can refer to this to help you set up the printer. We'd like to go ahead and talk about product placement with the 9700 and 7700, along with the other wide format printers in Epson's line. We'll first talk about the WT7900 and the CTP7900. These basically, these printers are aimed at a completely different market. The WT7900 uh, features white ink and is really aimed at the packaging and proofing markets for packaging because of that white ink allowing it to print on metallic film and clear films. The CTP is aimed at printers people that are doing traditional offset printing. Uh, with the CTP you can image a aluminum plate directly on the, uh, the 7900 CTP version of that printer. Um, so those printers we kind of put in a different class. The rest of the printers including the 9700, 7700, the 9890, 7890, and the 9900, 7900 basically um, are all the same chassis. Um, they utilize the same ink tank cartridge sizes, so you can get 150, 350, 700 milliliter tanks. Um, they can image or print to the same media, so they're compatible with all the same kinds of medias. And they also feature the same warranty. Um, they have similar printer operation. Everything is really going to be fundamentally the same. Um, however, there are some differences in where we would position these printers for your specific needs. So the 9900 printer, what DTG feels, that printer is basically the best printer in terms of image quality and print quality, not only in Epson's lines, but really basically on the market. Uh, that that printer features basically 10 plus 1 ink tanks. Um, it adds orange and green along with several other colors. Um, it basically uh, uses again all the same technology but because of those extra colors will yield the absolute best color print in the market. The 9890 and the 7890 class, those basically again are the exact same printers but they do not include the ability to use orange and green ink. So again, extremely high quality. They can be used in photo, they can be used in fine art applications, they can be used in CAD and engineering as well, um, but they basically don't feature that orange and green ink and they're going to have the same speeds as the 9900 class of printers and the 7900 class. Um, again, don't use orange and green so your gamut drops a little bit. Then finally we come to the 9900-7700. The, this series of printers again is, is aimed at the CAD architectural um, indoor POP signage, um, GIS mapping, all of those kinds of markets because those those markets tend to not have the real high quality demand as far as continuous tone, unbelievable color gamuts, but um, they require speed and production and cost per print. And by utilizing the five colors and um, doubling the use of the nozzles of, on the print head, these printers, the 700 series, can print extremely fast. Um, the quality isn't quite as good as the high-end photo fine art, but it is still surprisingly very good quality. So you can print photographic images on it, it's just not going to have 
the, the complete tonal range that the other class, the 9890 and the 9900s are. Um, finally, you know, comparing within the Epson class, we'd also like to talk about it, the, the Epson printers in relation to HP and Canon. Um, all of these printers produce very sellable prints and very high quality prints to their you know, respective marketplaces. The Epson does utilize a little bit different print head technology and the fact that it's a piezo inkjet head whereas Canon and HP use thermal inkjet heads. So piezo traditionally is a more controllable, um, a little bit higher quality and smaller droplet size, uh, more consistent. Um, it also is a permanent print head technology. You won't be replacing these print heads. Um, if anything goes wrong within the warranty, Epson does come out and replace the print heads, but you're not constantly changing those print heads. With Canon and HP, the thermal inkjet basically you know, uses heat to produce, that, um, to produce that droplet of ink, so they tend to wear out a little bit more. Um, you will be periodically replacing those print heads. So a fundamental different philosophy in actually how to get the ink down on the paper. Um, again, all very high quality printers make sellable prints, but a, a fundamental core difference in philosophy on how to, how to uh, utilize the, the, uh, the print head. Some of the features of the new 7700 and 9700 pre, uh, printers are obviously you have your choice between 24 inch, the 7700, and 44 inch, the 9700. Uh, it also utilizes Epson's patented piezo print heads for extremely consistent quality and the smallest droplet in its class. Uh, it utilizes five colors, really four plus one, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, plus your choice of photo and matte black. That choice allows you to print extremely rich blacks on matte paper by utilizing that matte black ink, and then photo black if you want to print on glossy stocks or semi-glossy stocks. It also features spindleless roll loading. If you're used to taking that spindle and putting it in the core, uh, the new Epson printers allow you to basically just place the roll right into the printer without a spindle, and we'll show you that a little bit later. Um, the, it also features a new rotary cutter that allows you to cut standard papers as well as thick, heavy, uh, fine art or canvas if you want to utilize the printer for that. Uh, the, you can also load sheet paper. Uh, you can load anything from an 8.5 by 11 up to a 40 by 60 in the 9700 uh, series printer. And it also allows you to print directly on poster board. So up to 1.6 millimeter thick rigid poster board you can load into these machines. Uh, it also prints up to 600 square feet an hour in its draft class. So anywhere from 100 square feet to 600 square feet an hour with its new uh, 10 channel print head utilizing 720 nozzles. Uh, that basically equates to a D sized print in from 31 seconds up to three minutes. Uh, and then finally, it includes software drivers that allows you to print PDF files, HPGL, HPGL2, CALS files, and a direct driver directly out of AutoCAD as well. On the Windows side, it adds a layout tool that allows you to actually lay out and group multiple images on that same page. Okay, so what we've done is basically taken the top off of the box itself. I had a help, and we just lift this straight up and over and off, and this reveals the contents of what's inside the box. We've got ink tanks here. This is the front of the printer. This box right here is basically the stand. So really the only thing we need to assemble is the stand. So we're just going to take this box off, pop it open, and we'll show you the contents of what's in the stand box and get that put together. So what you see here on the floor is basically the contents of the stand box, the box that was on top that we talked about. Uh, what we've got are two legs, one here, one there. Now these legs are actually marked L and R for left and right. We've got the cross brace that goes in between the legs, a basket or a, um, a little catch to keep your manual in. We've got some hardware which is basically going to be three screws for each leg to go into the cross brace and wing nuts to go to the printer stand or the mount the stand of the printer. And then here we've got the basket contents, basically where the prints go after they come and are printed out of the machine. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just start and we're going to take, <coughs> we've got the left and we've got the right and these are marked as well. So we've got R and we've got L. So we're going to match up those. We're going to insert that. We're going to take our hardware, screw th uh, three screws here, do the same thing on the other side, and that will basically mount 
the, uh, the legs to the crossbar. Okay, so as you can see, we've got the stand put together real, real quick. Um, what you see here is the contents of the basket. It's actually probably the, the most complicated thing about setting this, uh, this printer up. Um, a lot of little parts. So we recommend laying it out like this so you can see the whole thing. And you've got some bars. These are round. These two go towards the back. And then you've got a square one that goes in the middle section and then you've got these two shorter bars that are actually going to go vertical and then you've got this piece here that goes towards the front. Now what we're going to do is we're going to insert these rods into the basket, the actual cloth basket and we'll do that in each of the three sections. We'll insert this and then we'll continue on and show you actually how to mount the, uh, the basket to the stand base itself. So now that we've got the bars inserted into the actual fabric basket itself, um, we've got these components. We've got two pairs of these. I'm just going to take this end, put it on top of this rod, and we take this pin here, and we're going to put it into the side of the leg, and then we're going to insert this, and then basically this pin goes through the leg and then through this piece, which then swivels. We'll go ahead and do that on the opposite side right now. Okay, now that we've got the, uh, the two vertical poles mounted on the stand, we'll go ahead and start attaching the basket. There's some grooves down here that this round post will actually just snap right into. And we'll do it on the left and on the right hand side. Next, we'll go ahead and take this, which is that square pole, and we'll mount it in these two pieces. Then we'll take the chrome bracket here and there's holes that these ends will fit into on the front and then towards the back we've got one more round post and we'll just basically take that and just like we did on that first step is just snap it in to the bracket back here oops and now the basket is basically assembled Okay, so now that we've got the stand and the basket assembled, we can start to uh, focus on unboxing the printer itself. Um, in the packaging, you've got some ink cartridges, the, um, the end cap roll holders, um, some accessories and things like that. We're going to go ahead and pull all this packaging off and get the plastic off the printer so we can get that printer mounted on the stand. So what we've done is we've removed all the packing material except for what the printer itself sits on. At this point, what we're going to do is we do need to get some help here with lifting of the printer, but we're going to move the stand right in front of the printer and kind of line it up centered on the top. Again, remember we have the left and the right markers, but you'll notice we have these two um, basically posts that the printer has holes in the bottom. We'll lift the printer up, position the printer on the stand, line up the posts, and it'll sit right basically on the stand. Then we'll just take wing nuts and attach it to the base with the wing nuts. So as you can see, we've got the printer mounted on the stand. Um, one thing I failed to mention earlier was uh, we did this with two people. Uh, you may want to get a third person to help you out. The printer is heavy. Um, so get at least three people, one guy to help you put the position, the posts into the base of the printer, um, and two people to actually lift it. You may want to get a third to even help you lift it as well. Um, so this again is the assembled uh, printer that finishes unboxing and actually assembling the printer. What we'll do is we'll continue on and actually show you how to load paper, load inks, do the print head alignment, get the software loaded, and connect it to your network. Again, thanks for taking the time to, uh, to look at our introduction to the Epson 7700 and 9700 printers. If you have any questions at all, I know it can be confusing when you're looking at all these different kinds of printers and the sizes and the models and all that, please give DTG a call at 800-681-0024. You can also visit us online at www.dtgweb.com. And uh, we're going to be actually producing a setup and installation video of the 7700 and 9700 series in another video, so look for that sh uh, shortly. Thank you.